Hey, we're gonna do a really cool funky off canvas menu whereby when you hover over columns, further information appears. So it's not just like a navigation menu, there's a bit more going on in there. But let's have a look at how we do that. So I've got a page here, we're gonna add on an icon that will activate the pop-up, but we need to create the pop-up first of all. So you need to go to templates, click add new, and we're gonna select pop-up. And I'm gonna call this, um, I'm gonna call this cool pop-up. You would do a proper name, okay? Please don't imitate what I do, because I'm just a bit crazy like that sometimes. So we're just gonna create one completely from scratch. We got a blank section. Well, we're gonna have a section and we're gonna have four columns in there. This is a fake menu, by the way. It doesn't actually go anywhere, but I'm just showing you how we can do it. We're gonna click on the section and we're gonna make it a full width and no gap. This doesn't actually mean anything, but I, I like to do this out of force of habit. The minimum height though is important. We're gonna set that to be a VH100. What does that mean? It now means it's a full height 100 menu, okay? fit to screen. It is better to do this than select fit to screen. Trust me, it works. This is just the way, this is the way it is. You must do it, okay? Now we're gonna go down to settings down here, which is the cog. You click that and we're gonna set the VW to be 100 as well. Full height, full width. Uh, fit to content, that's fine. We are gonna have an overlay. We will have a close button and the entrance to animation, well, you decide what you want to do here. You know, you could go, we could go with a fade down and the exit might be a fade out up kind of thing. So when you hit the button, it fades, it comes down. And when you hit it, you take it away, it goes back up or left, right, down, bottom, however you want to do it. I would say though animation, put it about 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Um, 1.2 is a little bit slow for me in how things come in and I feel like I'm very impatient, you know, what's going on here? So 0 0.7 is reasonable. Now at the moment, those columns are in the middle. I could go to my section over here and I could set them to be top. One of the things you normally find though is that when you then start adding things in, or if I give this column a particular background color, okay, um, it's only gonna fill the content area. So if I've got contents of like header, text and image and it only comes up to about here and I give this a blue background, the blue background will only be about here. I want it to fill the entire column and here's a trick. If you go to column, if you go to custom CSS and you drop this code in, that column is now 100 VH. Let me just drop into this column a header like that. That header's at the top, okay? If I now scroll over here, look, it doesn't go past the screen. So that is now fitting to the screen. And that now means that when I give a column color, it's gonna fill the screen top to bottom. Um, so you're not having to basically use one of these spaces, which you can do to extend the size of your column. But the problem with that is that when you start adding in content, you then gotta go, right, that content is now 50 pixels. Right, I better do 950, 950, 950? 9.95, no, let me guess right, you, you get what I mean, the VH, right? So this is now 20% um, for your text. I better make sure my spacer is 80% because it's got to add back up to 100, okay? So this eliminates the need to do that. I'm gonna go over and I'm now gonna give this a background color. I've gone for a teal color. By the way, I'm just gonna like knock out the margins and padding on this so it literally fills up the entire area, okay? So that is gonna be our background. Um, for column one. I could, if I want, just get rid of all the other columns, but I'm not gonna do that yet. I wanna see how does this look on the screen when we have four equal size columns. By the way, I just wanna backtrack a moment. It's meant to say select or if you have div in there, it will it will cause a problem later on. So make sure you've got selector height 100 VH. So sorry if I made that mistake there, okay? Make sure you've got that and we've got our background color. So we are gonna drop in a header. Now the header's gone into the middle because if you go to our column and you go to our layout, the vertical line is set to the middle. Top would be top, you know, stretching all of that kind of thing. I've set it to the middle. We're just gonna do some really, really quick styling of this, okay? I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with this because I just wanna get across this feature and how we can make it work for us, okay? So I'm just gonna call this for now, we'll just call it home, all right? And you would stylize it accordingly to how you want. We're then gonna drop in a little bit of text underneath as well. And again, you would stylize this accordingly to what you wanna show. I'm just stylizing it. Now, one thing I will do is just go back to my column and I'm gonna give it a bit of breathing space, which looks a bit small, but eventually when you've got other content showing on there as well, 
that will look okay because we need to have some breathing space between our columns. Now I am just going to drop in an icon as well. You can drop in as many items as you want. Make it a relative to the menu item as well. Don't just stick in images that have no bearing at all because you don't want to confuse people. Okay, you know, I'm just going to do an icon like that and I'm going to give it about uh, 30, 30-ish. Yeah, that will do. You can put further items as well. Don't forget, you know, you could put a social sharing, sharing icon. You could put a, a video even. But the idea is, is that this text over here will not appear until you hover. Okay, and the background color for this will also change when you hover. Okay, stay with me on this. We are going to go over to our column. We have already put in a bit of code there to say this must be 100 VH. We're going to drop in some further code now. So this is one of my favorite codes that I use quite a lot and you'll see in previous videos, I'm always using it and applying it in a slightly different way. We're going to say image show the opacity is zero. But when you hover over the column, and that's why I've applied it to the column, right? Not the image, not the section, it's on the column, right? Column, custom CSS, and we drop this in. If I now go over here and just wait, let me just pick that word up there, image show, and give this a CSS class now, okay? Sorry, I've applied it to the wrong one, sorry. I'm applying it to the text, okay? I'm applying it to the text, okay? When I hover, then it will appear. Otherwise, the words are invisible, okay? I'm now just going to go over to the custom CSS for the column again, and I'm going to make the transition be about 0.5, okay? So when you hover, there is a little bit of a subtlety into how it appears and how it kind of goes in and out. You notice it says ease in out. If you don't have ease in out, it will transition, and when you hover over it, it will be abrupt and disappear. So having ease in out helps to, you know, blend it in a little bit. But what we're also going to do is have the background color change as well. Now, to make the background color change, we actually have to remove the original color, okay? And you're probably thinking, well, why have you done that for? I wanted to show you the color of what it originally looks like. Otherwise, I'd have a white screen there with white items on there, which wouldn't make no sense. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my color over here and I'm going to clear the color away, right? So the clear color is cleared. However, what is important is that you do make note of what the FFF codes were. So the code, the colors I'm going to be using, just to show you, is the original color will be this one here. And when you hover over it, it will then turn to this color. So make a note, copy, paste, make a note of those hex codes. So when I now go back to my column, okay, and it's cleared out the color, sorry, on the column, go to advance, go to custom CSS. We have our height. We have our image show, which you cannot now see because it's obviously everything is white. And down here, I'm going to drop in another bit of code. This is going to say dot elemental column hover background color. Da, 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 da. So when I now hover, we now have this color appear, but it is a little bit abrupt, isn't it? So we're just going to go over here and we're just going to take this transition effect and we're just going to drop it in here as well. Make sure you got the ease in out. In fact, take the whole thing, copy that and paste that in there. So we will now get that gradual color change. However, it's coming in from white. So let's put it on the original color. So there we go. I now have select all without the hover. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of the transition there because there doesn't need to be any transition effect at all there. Let me get rid of that. Ding. Uh, there we go. So we have our original color, which is that. And when we hover over it, we get that. And then you hover back out again. Okay, and then it, it drops off and then the text disappears as well. Now I know that this looks okay in terms of the columns. This is the point where I'm now just going to literally just go delete, delete, delete. <laughs> and then I'm just going to go duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Okay, and this is the point where you're going to go in now and change your items. So here we go. I have now added in four items onto my menu. Home services, bounties, who you're going to call, which could be your contact, okay? When you hover over any one of these now, the color changes and text appears. Really simple CSS code that you can experiment and play with. And then we get one over here as well. Now for bounties, I've intentionally done a different color. So look, you can have different colors because each one of these columns has individual code present within there, right? Look over here as well. So it goes back to traditional color and we have this different one. 
Now there are a few of the things you do want to make sure you take account of. Go back to your settings for your pop-up. I would, you know, stylize your close button. You know, don't just leave it as a little black over there because you can hardly see it. Let's make it white. Let's make it a little bit bigger over there and decide on, um, I would say avoid multiple pop-ups. It's, I just think it's a good thing not to have too many pop-ups open. Otherwise you've got to close, 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 close. By avoiding multiple, it will close the previous one when you go into another one. Just a good thing to do. And also make sure you double check how does this look on the mobile. So let's just double check because it's going to look a little bit weird. OK, because look at the moment, no matter how much you scroll, you're kind of a little bit stuck. Why? Because this column, remember, custom CSS has a selector height of 100 VH. What happens if I take that off for column one? We're then going to get this effect going on. So. This is where you really want to have a think about, do you want to have a separate menu that activates when you get onto the menu? Or are you going to go over here and put in, and you might say where the minimum width, uh, in fact, no, I'm going to say the maximum width is 480. I mean, let me just close this off here. So now what you're going to do is this um, 100 pixel or whatever you do will only activate when it's on a desktop screen. On a mobile, you will not have that, okay? But again, like I said, this is where you may want to have a think about, do you really want to be going for this effect? Because I think on the desktop's great, mobile not so much. And rather than me now tinkering with the margins and paddings and the coding and whatnot and galore and accidentally breaking what I've got done already as well, I would say that you go over to this section in, uh, yeah, you go to this section, go to advanced, go to responsive mode, and you say you hide that on the mobile. So when you get to the mobile, it is not there. But what you would have is another section that you could create further. So you could go up here, create another section now. And here's where you're going to create a, you just go over here, you create something different now. But this time, you know, it might be another section. Uh, you're going to go over, uh, make sure this is like full width as well. We know that the height of, um, sorry, make this section be a minimum height of VH as well. OK, make sure this is only working for the mobile. So hide it for desktop and tablet. Put it onto mobile mode. And now you'll stick in your menu system, your navigation menu, whatever you want. So you're keeping it nice and simple for the mobile. But on the desktop version, OK, that is what you'd see on the mobile. You'll have a different thing on the desktop. You will have your wonderful bounties, you know, color coordinated little menu system. Now let's apply this to your page. So I've got a test page here. I've just added in a section at the top there. I'm going to drop into here a icon like so. Just drop it in over there. We're going to make it a left icon. I'm going to click over here, change it to be bars for now. I will do some very quick styling on it. We'll just make it white, make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to go to advanced, go to positioning. And I'm going to say the width of this is custom. And I'm going to make the position be fixed. So that section I've made a full width. I've also zeroed out the margins and padding. In fact, make it a no gap there. For the column as well, zeroed out that. And for the icon, just to double check. Oh yes, I didn't do that. I'm now just going to stick it as a fixed. There you go to the right hand side. And I am just going to move it. I'm going to offset it by about 10 like that. So that when it is there, um, it's not bang up against the right hand side there. Okay. Now we're just going to go over to this icon, go to the content and over here for the link, we're going to click the dynamic tag. You click that, you scroll down and we have pop up. We click the spanner or the wrench and over here, I'm now going to type in cool pop up. I forgot what the name was then. It was called cool pop up and we're going to update and apply that. So we're now viewing this on a private window. And if I now go over here to the menu and click it, it came down, right? Because that's the entrance we had set for it. And look, we now have this pretty dynamic, not dynamic completely, but this could be whatever you want. Now on services, I changed it a bit and dropped in a video. So look, you can now play a video before you go through to the page kind of thing. So obviously, you know, have a think about your layout. You know, when you are building this, you would take account of your margins and your padding and make sure everything is nicely aligned. But this is a really, really simple approach as to how you can create a pretty bespoke looking 
navigation menu system. Okay, um, and I think it's really cool with the CSS code, which is so simple. Let's just close that. Remember, look, let's go into the column, custom CSS, the image height, whether the image is, the image is like opacity zero, you hover, it becomes one. And then we have the original color and what happens to the color when you hover? Simple, simple CSS code. No extra plugin needed, no other resources, except your time and your creativity. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow, and I'll see you soon.